enter into worship together. We thank you for the gifts that our choir shares with us, our musicians, our director. This morning I want to welcome all who are here in this place and those who are gathered with us online. And we especially want to welcome those who come among us as a guest this morning because, you know, we know that most often when God comes, God comes as a stranger. We look forward to meeting those people that we've not met before. If you're here for the first time, we hope you will let us know your name and maybe a bit about you. Well, you're welcome to join us right here. Yes. Is there anybody in the place that's new this morning that's not a student of Dr. Blakemore? <laughs> well, we are very glad that you've decided to join us this morning. We hope you will come back and worship with us often. Amen. A moment or two for announcements. Let me bring to your attention that 
this is Holy Week. Palm Sunday begins the Holy Week practice as we lead ourselves to Easter morning. But we can't get there without going through Maundy Thursday and Good Friday. Amen. We'll do that together. As you look at your announcements in the bulletin, you will find a listing for Holy Week. There is the BMCR service of the last words on Friday evening at 7 online. Then there is the community Easter egg hunt on March the 30th from 12 to 2, and the Easter program for the children on Sunday the 31st. Robin Matthews would be happy to answer any questions that you have if you contact her. So in at least two places, you can see the dates and the times, and you can also check the website should there be anything there that you need to know. Um, I would remind you that today is blood pressure check day and you can have that done immediately following the service in the E.J. Cox Hall. You have some inserts and you'll see those but I think we really need to raise up one that I would consider not only an announcement but also a prayer, uh, a prayer of thanksgiving for the gifts of Dr. Marie Milam as she has been honored by <coughs> Faith Magazine as Women, Women's History Month honoree. We are not surprised, and I told her this morning, I just am really proud that Faith Mag Magazine recognized what we already know about Dr. Mayer. Amen. Are there other announcements that you would make this morning? Because we will be celebrating children on Easter morning as well as worshiping together next Sunday at 1030, we will not have Sunday school. Well, then let us join our voices as we stand together and sing hymn number 154, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, 154.
all to worship. The parade today is just the beginning of our hope journey. We, we wave, wave our branches and shout Hosanna. But there will come a time of silence and of mourning. Help us to be ready for that time, O oh Lord. Blessed is Jesus who came into Jerusalem on that day. Blessed is Jesus who comes into our hearts always. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, we've come a long way on this journey. For so many of us, we know where the scriptural road will take us. And we will walk triumphantly into Jerusalem, eat a supper meal with Jesus, and watch as he is taken from the garden and brought before the authorities. We will weep at the foot of the cross as he speaks words of love and forgiveness. And we will wail at the tomb. We have the story of his friend Lazarus who has died. His sisters, Mary and Martha, have confidence that he could have been healed. But they do not think that he can be raised from the dead. That is part of the problem. It's part of our problem. We want to have confidence in the healing, restorative power of Jesus. But we cannot escape our fear of the arch enemy, death. Jesus' proclamation of eternal life is real. We need to let go of our fear. For life in eternity is also God's promise, a home with God. Can we come out of our darkness? Can we risk believing in Jesus? Those are hard questions and cannot be answered without the trip to Jerusalem, to the cross and to the tomb. God, please be with us on this journey. Amen. 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 And you may remain seated for our hymn of adoration, number 301 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross, number 301.
you to stand with me as we affirm our faith. You'll find the words printed at 881 in your hymnal. Will you stand? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from which he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. seated for our anthem, Ride On, King Jesus.
Let the church say amen. 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 We're coming to the point of announcements, but we want to work with our union students first in a special announcement. Dr. Blake Moore, will you open us up, please, sir? Yes, and my opening is very easy. Twyla Watson, <laughs> Weston, excuse me, is actually going to make the, the class presentation about the project we're going to be doing with the church. So I'm going to sit down and be quiet and let her do that work. Amen. Hello. Hey. How you all doing this morning? Um, again, my name is Twyla Weston. We're from Union University, the Department of Social Work. And we're here um, to speak on establishing a survey in the effort to create and identify opportunities for advocacy and service opportunities that will be beneficial for the church and community. Um, this survey will be for the congregation, all current members, that it will give a clear picture of the ability, skills, talents, and professional practices um, which can help to identify who is centenary. Yes. Um, we would then identify those top three service opportunities um, and advocacy activities that the church should consider actually pursuing. Uh, the survey will be available online. A lot of and um, a lot of us we like paper, so we will also <laughs> have it on paper. <laughs> yeah. um, but it will be available online for those that are um, tech savvy. Um, the partners, um, so there will be interviews conducted by the partners to identify church partners, including the Mickham Black Clergy Collaborative and the Project Transformation. This will be, um, there will also be a developing coordinating committee, and what that is, is the committee will serve as the decision-making body um, related to findings and the recommendations for future services and advocacy efforts. Uh, the committee membership is now under development. Um, the meetings, there will be meetings with selected ministries uh, within Centenary to identify the opportunities for service and advocacy activities as well. The Board of Trustees is now just one example to review facility usage opportunities as well as the Divine Nine focus group to develop collective service and or advocacy opportunities for Greek members at Centenary. Thank you so much for your time. Amen, amen. So that was a beautiful presentation. And if I could just interpret that for you, they're gonna be doing a survey. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we need to know what our gifts and graces are. And many of us have so many gifts and graces in the church. And what we find is when you learn someone has a, a gift and they say, well, no one ever asked me to do something. And so we don't want to be in a position of not ever asking you to live into your God-given gifts and graces, right? And so this is a Master of Social Work class at Union again, and Dr. Blakemore invited me about a month ago. I'm really impressed. This is a dynamic class. Can we give them a hand? And we just, and we, we just, we just thank God for them, and, and we look forward to working with you. Amen. Other testimonies on the goodness of God and Sister Mayo will have the mic. Testimonies on the goodness of God. You just heard a fabulous testimony to the ministry of social work. How many of us have had lives that have been touched by social workers? We will pray for you in this program. We will. Others, I'm not sure we say God's name out loud in public unless we're in church. This is an opportunity this morning to name God's goodness in your life. All right. I know my husband doesn't like to tell his business, but <laughs> he had back surgery, and he is doing so much better. Amen. So the good doctor becomes the patient, Amen. and that is very hard for a medical doctor to be a good patient. So I want to just lift up the name of Jesus Amen. for helping my husband through this very difficult time. Amen. Amen. And the promise that God will be with you all the way through. Mm -hmm. Healing is a gift. Others? Well, then we'll turn to our scripture reading. 
You're invited to stand as we hear Tiffany Milam Owens read for us the New Testament gospel from the Gospel of Mark. Will you stand as you're able in body or spirit? Good morning, Centenary. Good morning. Let's take a moment to focus our hearts and minds on the Word of God. Today we will be reading Mark chapters 14 and 15, which tell the powerful story of Jesus' final days on earth. This is a change from what is printed in the bulletin and rather lengthy. So while I invite you to remain standing, I do understand that at any point you need to take a seat. Please feel free to do so. Let us open our hearts to receive the message. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of, un of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher ask, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, surely not I. He said to them, it is one of the 12, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the son of man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would, have, it would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, 
Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The man of son is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then he laid hands on him and arrested him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at, the at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, you also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it saying, I do not know or understand what you were talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed and the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. 
Then after a little while, the bystander said to Peter, certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore on an oath. I do not know this man you were talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they ask. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he asked them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish for me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Siren, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance, 
Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger of Joseph and Salome. Used, these used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up to him, come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the word of the Lord. to hear our song this morning, our preparation, He Decided to Die by Vietta Lewis. Just 
my Lord. He decided. He decided to save me and you. Amen. 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 I just want to let that linger a minute. Is it all right? Yes. Yes. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for the work of Calvary. Lord, we thank you that we are even in this moment able to work out our salvation, Lord, with fear and trembling before your holy throne, Lord. Lord, I just ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be well-pleasing in your sight. It is in your darling son, Jesus' name, that we pray. And the people of God said, amen and amen. We're so thankful for Sister Tiffany for reading the whole story. Amen. Yeah. So, yeah. Sometimes we'll pull part of it, but we, sometimes we just need the whole thing. Because some of us won't read it. And some of us will. Amen. But sometimes we need to hear it together. And so scripture has been read in your hearing. And the title of the sermon this morning is, What Evil Has He Done? What evil has he done? And I'm coming down. All right. Amen. Amen. So the historical context we have, here we are on Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. And Jesus knowing that he's going in on a donkey and they're laying down palm leaves and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. But he also knows that I'm going to die. I'm going to be crucified, and I can't not go. And here we are at the time of Passover, and this Passover feast is celebrating something that occurred 1,400 years earlier when the children of Israel were freed from slavery in Egypt. And you put the blood of a lamb over your doorpost so your firstborn son wouldn't die. Right. And you eat this unleavened bread, but you don't have time for it to rise. In fact, you can't eat it unless you got your shoes on, your loins girt, and you're ready to go. Go where? Anywhere but here. Because you've been in slavery for 400 years, and where you're going, somewhere else. I don't have to know, but I just believe God. And sometimes you just got to walk out on faith. And when God tells you to do it, you just got to do it. A lot of us want to see the end before we'll move. Well, that's not God. God said, be faithful, for I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Just, just depend on me, depend on my salvation. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Have we ever had to taste the Lord for ourselves? And, 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 and we knew that whatever we try, we don't know how to do it. But God. But God. First point, I want to talk about the plot to kill Jesus. So, you ever had anybody plot on you? Oh, you know, it's hard. You know, especially when you know they plot on you, right? And, 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 and you can't say nothing sometimes because you, you'll fall the plot. You got to let God come in. But sometimes we want to go in and, and, and say, you know I know, you, you, you know I know what you're doing. <laughs> no, God said, no, you let it, you, you, I'll, I'll take care of you. I, I'll make your enemies your footstool. I'll put a hedge of protection around you. But I want you to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves, as sheep in the midst of wolves, right? Just, you, you, might, you might look crazy, but you're not crazy. And so just know that God is faithful. This plot, and these are the chief priests and the scribes, which were the keepers of the law. And so you would think they would be on the same team, you know, because he was teaching in the synagogues, and, and he was teaching the, the, the law and, and all that, but it said it was, Scripture says that they got jealous. You know, if you used to having a lot of power, and but your power is worldly power, 
and somebody come in with a power of love, and you know the power of love can overcome anything. Amen. I don't care how wicked that power is, you just keep letting love work, and, and next thing you know, folks who are getting ready to throw stones or throw their rock down and come and tell you the rest of the plot. But you got to stay in love. See, we don't, stay in, we don't stay in love anymore. Some of us won't stay in love with our spouse. Talking to myself this morning. Won't stay in love with, with our children. <laughs> he can't come back over here. Uh, <laughs> talking to myself again. No. And so, and, but, 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 but won't, won't stay in love with each other in our friendships. We do one thing. And what we want to do, counsel culture. And don't never want to uh, let any forgiveness come in. Don't want to let any grace of God come and wash over you. But guess what? I want the grace of God on me, but I don't want to extend that same grace to you. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. And so th this plot is we can't take them because people love them too much. We can't take them right now, and it'll be an uprising if we take them. But what we can do, we can find something to catch them slipped up, and then we can get them so that we can get rid of him so that we can kill him because his power is a challenge not just to the authority of the Sanhedrin but it's a challenge to the authority of Rome and so Rome doesn't know what to do with somebody who ain't scared to die because the cross was initially an implement of crucifixion what of shame of terror of what we'll do to you if you ever step out of line. We got a cross, we got a cross for you. But the power of God comes in and inverts the meaning of the cross and it becomes the sight of deliverance. I'm feeling good this morning now. The sight of, of, of revelation, the sight of breaking the yoke of bondage. Of destroying fear and, and being overwhelmed with guilt and shame and not forgiving yourself. When you repent, you know you're supposed to forgive yourself. You ask God to forgive you. A lot of us have never forgiven ourselves. And, and I'm learning the reason we won't forgive ourselves. Because if somebody had done me the way I've been doing people, I wouldn't forgive them. I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to walk over here. I wouldn't. And, and, and I think God is petty like me. I don't know that God is the God of love because I won't let love come and wash over me because I'm too busy trying to get you back. I don't care how long it takes. It might take me 20 years to get you, but I'm going to get you one day. You ever see folks like that? <laughs> I done had some folks to get me. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes folks are getting you and you don't know it. <laughs> well, if you don't know it, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. but, 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 but what God is saying is I, this power of love always transformed the power of fear, of violence, the threat. That, that, that's terror, terrorizing you. A lot of us live in terrorized existences right now. We don't want to talk. We don't want to say what we're supposed to say. And, and especially we don't want to say it where it would count the most. I hear guys in the barbershop doing all kind of talking. I say, you been down to city council? No. <laughs> well, go down there and say it at city council. Say it at the state legislature. Say it at the school board meeting. Right. But talk, me and Junebug ain't going to do nothing about it. <laughs> you, see, you see what I mean? Say it where it counts. Yeah, say it. And then when you say it, stand on it. But you know we talked about that, right? White folks, stand on business. Stand on, stand on your business. And, 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 and know that because you're standing on it, no matter what, it's the truth. And let God be true and every man alive. It is the truth. So here's this plot to kill Jesus. Second is the betrayal. You ever been betrayed? Yeah, it hurt, doesn't it? 
Al Green said, how do you mend a broken heart? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, how, how can you heal this broken man? <laughs> what makes the world go round? You know what I'm saying? And then it gets, he said, la, 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 la. You, you, I wish I could sing. I wish I could sing. It gets so good. How, you, how do you heal? I think I want to live, live again. It, it's time for you to live again. La, la, la. Live again. You've been, you've been walking around a shell of who you're supposed to be, still holding on to a relationship that's been gone 5, 10, 20, 40 years ago. I never will forget what he did. You need to let it go. And, and another thing, what have you done to, to, to folk? Well, I won't talk about that. I won't talk about what we've done to, 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 to me. I need to be a victim right now. And, and they did me like that when I was little. <laughs> Mad if folk been dead 40 years. Go out to the graveyard. Supposed to take flowers. Cussing at the tombstone. You ever seen that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, that and, and what? Let it go. Forgive. Move on. So then, yeah, yes, yeah. So then Judas, not only is he going to betray him, because he know Jesus is getting ready to get crucified, because you can't do this much, shaking up all this power structure and say, if you'll pay me, then I'll give him to you. And just, just, just giving the man up is one thing, but the one who I kiss and call rabbi, that's me turning states on him. That's me snitching on him right there. And, and, and Jesus still knows this, right? And then Peter saying, whatever I do, I'm going to be with you. Even if they kill me, I'm going to be with you. Then they take Jesus, and Peter get within earshot from the temple when, when, he's, when they've taken him to Herod, right? And Peter's out warming himself, right? St Scripture tells us. And say, you're a Galilean. I, I know you. No, no, you don't know. I'm not the one, right? No. Second time, you, you, I know that's you. No, no, it's not me. Here go the crow, right? Third time, Peter get to cussing and said, I swear to God that I don't know him. I don't know Jesus. I swear to God I don't know Jesus. Have you ever done that? No, no I'm talking about in your behavior. Sworn to God that you don't know the Messiah. That betrayal continues to hearken. So the third and final point is the crucifixion. But see, I've been living with this text all the week. You know, this, this, this is a hard text because it's so bloody. Yeah. It's so violent. Yeah. Uh, it's so inhumane. But it's not just death. It is deathliness. Let's think about some forms of deathliness that we allow in our lives. When, you, when we go through life and we are afraid to live and to live into our baptismal identity, do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever form it presents itself? And we say what? I do. And then we'll see evil. And we say, my 401k, I still need three more years, so I can't, I can't say nothing. We'll see injustice. Well, I got my, my children ain't getting shot in the street, and I'm taking care of mine. And oppression. Well, I, I made it in. They're going to have to get in the best way they can. Instead of you making it in and keeping the door open, a lot of you get behind it and <laughs> slam it shut so hard. And brag, I'm the only one living in this neighborhood. I'm the only one on this job. Only one. Are you trying to help recruit some more? <laughs> no, I don't want them up here. All right, all right, all right. We'll move on. <laughs> and whatever forms it presents itself. And so this also is deathliness in I don't really love me. 
I don't, because I'm looking for someone else to affirm me. I'm letting someone else be the arbiter or my identity. I, I, I don't, I haven't accepted that I am fully made in the image of God, the imago Dei, and that every other human being I look at is made in the image of God. And if I can't see that, that says more about me than it ever could about them. Yes, yes, yes. What, what human being can you look at and think that they're not a child of God? And, and when you start seeing folks calling people animals and, and vermin, we, we, we see a history of that with, with the Holocaust, right? And we see it again coming, this dehumanization. Because even uh, we tell folks, uh, folks who were enslaved, they weren't slaves. They were human beings who were enslaved. Because you need to put the onus on who did the enslaving, Amen. that system. Because you weren't born a slave. Amen. You're born a child of God. Yeah. That condition was forced upon you. But conditions can change. Amen. That's why even clinicians use person-first language. For example, you wouldn't say an autistic child. You would say a child who's experiencing autism because you don't talk about their condition first, their human being first, right? And, 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 or that they're suffering with something. You don't know what folks suffering with. Uh, they talked about a woman was confined to a wheelchair. She said, this wheelchair don't confine me. It gets me around the world. If I didn't have it, I couldn't go anywhere. So we just have to be careful how we understand that. And then some, the moment we call somebody a, a junkie, an alcoholic, a slave, now you can do anything to them. Because not the person, the child of God, who we doing it to. See, dehumanization always precedes that kind of oppression. So we just need to make sure that we don't begin to place anyone outside the human family. Because we're in sin. As I take my seat, uh, Jesus is really clear. We can't raise him up today, y'all. It ain't no he got up. Not today. We've got to sit with it. In the grave. Yeah. But we need to know that death is, is common, the common grave, right? But you got to know it's some things that's worse than dying. And sometimes we'll live in conditions that's worse than dying. As the songwriter says, Oh, freedom, before I be a slave. I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. So, hey, some of us think we have to live huddled over and scared at tiptoe stance. Can't live out the fullness of who you are. Stand up and be counted and live like that. Amen. And if you can't live like that, then die for it. That's easy to say, isn't it? Die, if, if I can't live for it, then I'll die for it. Well, you're going to die anyway. I mean, of something. You might as well live into it and just say, hey, this, for God I live, and for God I die, and in God I have my being. That's what I have for you. Amen. <laughs> Doors to the church are open. If you don't know Jesus Christ for the pardoning of your sin, we ask that you come. Amen. 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 Is there one? But I'm in heaven. If I haven't met you, I'm Judy Hoffman. I'm a retired pastor in the United Methodist Church. 32 years in ministry, most of them in Nashville, Tennessee, with my colleague, Keith Cobb. Well, because we both served in Nashville together, neither one of us ever heard each other preach. <laughs> and then in 2020, six weeks before COVID hit, a tornado hit the church where I was serving with my husband. Destroyed the church, the parsonage we were living in. And we had to make a decision. Four months later, 
a centenarian, District Superintendent Deborah Smith called me and invited me to come and serve at St. John's United Methodist Church, your sister church. And I served there till I retired last year in August. And I said to Matt, you know, for the first time ever, we get to sit next to each other in church. <laughs> and we get to pick any church that we want to worship in. Anyone. I really want to go to Centenary, I told him. But I've never heard Keith Caldwell preach. If he can't preach, we're not going. <laughs> so we came. Turns out he can preach, can he? <laughs> and the choir can sing. And those musicians can play. And Cynthia can direct. And the ushers can ush. And the children can hug and kiss you. And I will tell you this, and you can hear it on social media, I have never in my life been in a more hospitable church than this. You have welcomed us and made a place here for us. And if you haven't chosen where you're going to come to worship when you're here in Memphis, I invite you to come back here. If you're online and you haven't found your congregation, this one is it. So I invite you to place your membership here. Just come visit first. You won't ever be able to go anywhere else. The altar is open. I invite you to come as you feel led to be in prayer, that we might pray with you and for you. It is open. Please come. that you are closer to us than our breath is to us. We know that there is nothing that we have done that can separate us from your love. There is nothing that we can do that will make you love us more. So God, accept these prayers. We offer them earnestly knowing that you hear our every plea. Knowing that there are those who have yet to find you or to find their home. We pray that you would lead them to us, that we might lead them to you. Blessed assurance, oh God. Bless all your children. Bless this earth. Our families, the ones we love, and those who hurt. We lift.
lift all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I would invite those who will receive our offering this morning, the offering we make with open hearts. Would you come forward this morning? You're invited to place your gifts in the baskets as they come. You also may make your gifts online. Let us pray. God, we know that all that we have and all that we are belongs to you. And it is a privilege to return a portion of it, that you might use it to build your kingdom on earth. May we be as generous as you are with us. Amen. this morning.
me. Lord God, we, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you for your saving love, Lord. We thank you for the work of Calvary and what you did for our sins, Lord, to make available salvation. We love you, Lord, and we just ask um, that we seal this time in our heads and in our hearts as we go about this week, Lord, and as we go about our day but never leaving your presence. It is in your darling son, Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God said, amen. amen. Hear this benediction. May the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God said, Peace.